I want to go to the word right now. It's in 1 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. He says in verse 15, You know that everyone in the province of Asia deserted me. Holy Spirit, without your help, I can't do this, but with your help, I can share it and they can get it. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know that everyone in the province of Asia deserted me. Paul's having a rough day. He's having a rough day. He felt like everyone deserted him. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. He, uh, he was having a bad day because the word desert there is, is, is an interesting word. And I, in, in the Greek, it means this. They defected. They turned away. They were AWOL. Lonnie was a master sergeant. He understands the term AWOL. So when you look at this scripture, Paul is having a really, really rough time. The context, he's in jail in Rome. He's, he's being threatened with death. In fact, I went to the place where he was chained. It's interesting. I was walking in Rome several years ago on a ministry trip, and I went for a walk, and I stumbled upon the prison, Paul's prison. And it's not a nice place. It was underground, of course, because of centuries. But there was a pillar in the middle, and there was a chain. So this man was chained to a, 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 a rock pillar, and that's where he spent, and it was cold. Can you imagine back then how he felt? And he said, everyone deserted me. Why? Because in Rome, if you were put in prison, generally they put your entire family in prison, and your friends, and they'd probably torture you and kill you on a bad day. So he's not feeling very excited right now. However, and then he even names two people. He says, they all deserted me. They defected, including Phy Phygelus, <laughs> what a name, and Hermogenes, <laughs> if that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. I'd have to ask Dr. Lim. I think he's ministering at the self. But two people that were notable in terms of walking away from the team, turning their backs on the gospel. See, when you're a leader, you've got to get ready for people to let you down. If you're a leader in your family, you're a leader in your church, you're a leader in your company, leadership sometimes can be the loneliest place possible because people will let you down. My dad used to say, Paul, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Yeah, but sometimes it means when the going gets tough, people get going. Because to sit with you and stand with you and fight through tough things is really hard for people to do. One time when I was in Belgium, I remember I told you the story before, but I'll remind you of it. We're in the, I was in the back of the bus with, with two of my American buddies. One of my buddies had one of those cool hats like Bishop had last week, and, and uh, a, a gang, uh, like 20-year-old, 24-year-old, 22-year-olds got on the bus. We're only 14 years old, and they went to the back, and they started bullying my buddy. They took his hat. I stood up. I said, give him the hat back. Well, little did I know that they literally jump on me and start pounding me. They jumped me and started punching me and kicking me and punched me in the back of a bus. Finally, and my friends just sat and watched. None of them defended me when I was defending them. So Paul felt this way. He said, listen, he says, everybody abandoned me, even those two guys that were pretty well known. Otherwise, he wouldn't have mentioned their name. But then he says this, but may the Lord grant mercy to the family of Onesiphorus. Can you say that word, Onesiphorus? Because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my imprisonment. All right, so he's having a bad day, mass defecting, mass people dumping him because he's in prison and going through a hard time. There's a, and, and especially two guys really hurt him. But now he goes, oh, but not, not Onesiphorus. Not, someone say the one. This guy... I call him the one because he often refreshed me. The word refreshing is cool. It, you know what it means in the Greek? It's, it's such a great word. It, it means this. It means to refresh, to recover from heat or the effects of heat, like a heat stroke, to cool somebody off. We live in Vegas. When it's 115 out there, guess what? We need a refreshing, right? Remember the old song, when you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. 
You can see it all down at City Hall, but when you're hot, you're hot. Remember that song? No, okay. How many? Is this ICLV? So, so when you think about this, it's a guy that refreshed him. It was hot in prison. It was, it was threats of death and torture every day. It was rats on the floor, and bugs in your food, if you got any. It was hot. And the Bible says here that Onesiphorus, what does it say? It says he even went and refreshed him. Some of you need a refreshing. Did you know that? That's why you're going to be buying these tickets because someone else needs a refreshing. You don't know they're suicidal right now. You don't know they're addicted to drugs. You don't know right now they, 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 they're going through the pains of divorce. You just don't know it. You don't know. But when you get the tickets and you invite somebody, they come to church and get saved, you're the one that saved them. The Bible says that he who wins souls is wise. So when you grab these tickets and you go out, you become a soul winner and you're the one. Someone say the one. Because you know when you get to heaven one day, let's keep reading and I'll make a point. It says, because he often refreshed me. You know, if we, you refresh people, they're going through a hard time, it's hot, but you cool them down. You, you just provide love and comfort and, and help. And it says he, he wasn't ashamed of my imprisonment. You know, it's really interesting, when I was sick, I, 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 I discovered a new um, perspective to suffering. I, I've been massively blessed in my life, and I, I've had tremendous health until about two years ago. And um, I can honestly tell you that, that not a lot of people came and refreshed me. Pasquale and Norma would, Pasquale would come over all, every couple of days. I'd be on my couch dying, crying. Because, you know, when you're getting for heaven, you repent of everything. And I don't know about you, but, but you get serious. When you're, when you're dying, you get really serious about stuff. And, and I started repenting. Anybody ever repent? I even made stuff up just because I didn't know. It's like, oh, Jesus, you know, just, it's like when I was a little kid, we had to go to confession. I would make stuff up. I'm not kidding, because, you know, when you're six years old, you got to go to confession. You go behind that little box there, and the priest opens up the thing, and you got to go, oh, forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. Uh, I got mad at my sister. <laughs> I don't know. It just, I made stuff up. So I'm on the couch, and I'm suffering, and you, you think that a bunch of people would have called me or, or helped me, and they didn't. It was really weird. It's like... When someone's not doing well, people don't know. And it's not because people are bad. It's they don't know what to say. It's so, so no one's bad. I'm not putting shade on anybody. I'm just saying they just don't know what to say. So I always make it a point. When I know someone's suffering, I pick up the phone or I send a text. Hey, sorry, John. I, I saw you lost your dad. Are you okay? Anything I can do for you? Hey, hey. So, why? Because when someone's, you got the heat. Things are going badly. That's when you need refreshing. So if we're going to be the body of Jesus Christ, we've got to be the ones. Someone say the ones. Like Onesiphorus. I mean, he, 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 it says he wasn't ashamed. I remember, I remember when I was a, not a Christian, uh, someone had cancer and pe uh, someone said, oh, they have cancer because they have sin in their life. That was not refreshing. But when I became a Christian, I thought that, that crazy dumb theology would be done with, but I heard the opposite. I heard, thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much, man. I, I just think about what happened when I became a Christian. Someone had cancer, and you know what the other person said? A Christian said, oh, they have cancer because they didn't tithe. Why was it that Onesiphorus was not ashamed of Paul at a hard time? Why was it that he was unafraid to risk his own life? It says here, verse 17, but when he arrived in Rome, he eagerly searched for me and found me. That's why Bishop went over there last week. That's not what I wanted him to do. I wanted him to preach the message. But for some reason, God prompted him to go minister to the person over there. They were having a tough time. You could tell they were struggling. And for some reason, like a good shepherd, he left the group and he went over and ministered. I, I thought that's good because... Because you know what? He's being a good shepherd right now. He's a bishop. I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, this one, he's the one that, that when he got to Rome, he sought out Paul and found him at the risk of his own life. Wednesday, 
Do you know what it costs to go help the homeless? A lot. Time, energy, and money. Frank and Linda, they gave and gave and gave, and there's a, there's a, a barber that cut people's hair, and I saw a cool picture of him cutting free, hair for free, and, and then all the clothes that we gave away, and the food, and the blankets. Why? Because these people, most, many of them are mentally ill living on the streets. It's an epidemic. Because sometimes they're not on, maybe they fought in, in the war and they're, they're struggling with PTSD or whatever else syndrome they're, but they're on the streets. They're not on the streets because they want to be. They're on the streets because they're jacked up. And Wednesday, thank you, the Dream Center did an amazing job of loving. They did an amazing job. And then again yesterday, thousands of people, over a thousand people, just families just saying, we need food. We need, a, we need help just to get by. We're not ashamed of them. I remember when I was a new Christian, they said, Paul, uh, how are you doing? I said, I'm sick. They said, no, 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 you're not sick. I said, I am sick. No, 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 you're not sick. Don't confess that. I, you know, in other words, if I'm a Christian, I can't admit when I'm sick. The Bible says if I'm sick, call the elders to pray for me, and I'll be healed. No, 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 that's a bad confession. Well, the Bible says I should tell people when I'm sick, and they're going to pray for me, and I'm going to get better. But somehow we were ashamed of people that are sick. Somehow we get ashamed of people that are struggling in their marriage and we judge them. Not you, other churches. You're not very judgmental, but other churches are. Are y'all with me? Come on, don't, don't be a hater, right? Don't hate me. You know I'm talking the truth. Is what he said. This man was not ashamed even though I was not at my best. Thank you, David. Even though I wasn't at my best, I was doing poorly. And that's how I felt at home dying on my couch. Where is everybody? I'm hurting. So Bishop Jackson calls me. I'm crying on the phone. I said, every once, every once in a while, one of the Onisiphorses would call me. Hey, Pastor, you okay? Pasquale would knock on my door. Bam, bam, bam. I'd be crying on the couch. <laughs> it's just like, wow. I know what it's like to feel horrible. And I know you do too. And the tendency is to isolate when we're feeling bad. Oh, I can't go to church. I don't feel good. I, I feel bummed out or whatever. I, I, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. I'm ashamed. Don't be ashamed because we're not ashamed of you. We love you. You're going through hell. Let us jump in. Thank you. Let us jump in with you. Let us jump in and help you. We're not ashamed of you. Why are you ashamed of yourself? We love you. I had a person come up to me today who's was been she's been freed from a prostitution she came up to me today and thanked me for what we're doing at our church and all the amazing things that my wife and so many leaders are doing right now she thanked me and she she, she you could tell she was rocked by god but that that i was i, I fought back tears because that's the gospel that's the gospel and she's going to be the one that saves a lot of others. And you're going to be the one that wins one more person, that serves one more person. You're going to be the one. Someone say, I want to be the one. Here's the last verse. It says, may the Lord grant him, Onesiphus, to find mercy from the Lord on that day. Verse 18. You're awesome. Thank you. Mercy. You know, a lot of people say, man, when I get to heaven, God's got some explaining to do. Remember I love Lucy? Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Remember that? You need to watch it on you. Some of you guys, how many of you ever watched Lucy? Come on. I love Lucy. How many of you have never watched I love Lucy? We're going to get you all saved right now. Come on. Sha -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> it's not explaining, explaining. You drop the E and the X and you just put an S there. Splaining. You got some splaining to do. People go, oh, I get to heaven, man. God better explain to me why this happened or that happened, blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking, not me. You know, I got one thing that I'm going to do and say when I get to heaven. Mercy. Mercy. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Oh, God. Ah. You're laughing, but that's my strategy. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm not going to go, well, yeah, I just deserve to be here. I'm all that and a slice of bread. I'm going, oh, mercy. And Paul saying, hey, Onesiphorus, I'm praying on that day. Look what it says here. It's, so, it's such a great word. May the Lord grant him mercy 
from the Lord on that day. What's that? The judgment seat of Christ. Say, what's the judgment seat of Christ? It should scare the H-E double hockey stick out of you. I'm telling you. The judgment seat of Christ is serious because he's going to separate the goats from the sheep. Holy cow. You don't want to mess with the judgment seat. It's like Raiders of the Oz Ark. Remember he's going through and he's got a duck in humility because the blade goes right over. That's what, that's what the judgment seat of Christ is all about. Ooh, and we're all going to face it. You know the one thing that's sure about life is what? Death. You'll never get out of this life alive. Some of you are going to get this driving home. Oh, pastor made a joke. It was a pun. <laughs> is it okay that I preach? Are you guys okay? This is ICLV, right? You guys are online. Can you help me out? Give me a big old shout in that, yeah, in that condominium. Give me a big old shout. Yeah! Okay, thank you. I want mercy on that day. God doesn't need to explain anything to me. My mind's puny compared to God. I, he's righteous and I'm not. I've fallen short so many times. See, that's the beautiful thing about Anisiphorus. He said, I'm not going to judge him for being in prison. There's not sin in his life. Do you know how many times I've heard that? People judgmental. Well, there are problems because there's sin in their life. Give me a problem. No, there's problems because they live in the world. Don't judge them. My dad used to always say, Paul, before you judge somebody, walk a mile in their moccasins. My dad had all these quotes. I wear this ring to honor him. He has all these funny quotes. He's true, though. Remember the old song? Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes before you judge. All three of us know that song. <laughs> or I'm the only one. Before you judge, criticize and abuse. Walk a mile in my shoes. Everybody, who knows that song? Uh, thank you, okay. Am I from another planet? It's like, mm, I'm an alien, I'm a zombie. Mm. I know I'm wearing another outfit, but this is still Paul Goulet. Well, sort of, anyway. Some of you are still freaking out about that. Did you see his shoes? They got little shiny things on it. <laughs> no, okay, no, don't make me. Ah! Don't make me start. The Lord spoke to me the other day. He says, Paul, how do, you want to spend, how do you want to spend the last days of your life? You say, that, did that scare the boogers out of you? Not really. It just made me think how I want to spend the next 25 years. It really did because, I mean, actually the Lord could come back tomorrow. And if we're Christians, we'll get raptured. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. See, some of you know that song. Well, it's because you're Christian. I was singing your secular songs before. <laughs> Can you imagine that? That's going to be kind of cool. But, but the, the point here is that, we're, I'll get back to my main point, is that the Lord said, Paul, how do you want to spend the last days of your life? And I, I really believe that meant years, because a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day, so I'm not freaking out. I just thought, okay, God, give me 25 more years. Let's, let's make a deal. And, and, and give me 25 more years, man. We've only been here 26 at ICLV. What happens for the next 25? What will that look like? And, 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 and you know, for me, it's, it's all seeing the next generation rise up. Christine and Lawrence getting up here and killing it and all that. And, and, and the first service, I had Pasquale and Norma do the transition, just killing it. And they really don't need me. I'm just here for, I'm like window dressing right now. I'm the, 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 the older guy getting dressed up like a kid. Hallelujah. Shabbat, 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 Shabbat. <laughs> And here's the last point. And you know very well all the ways he served me in Ephesus. 